It is quite possible that there aren't men of intelligent men and women who are not yet aware of the fact that wild animals have moral codes, and that on average they live up to them better than men do theirs. William Hornaday, The Minds and Manners of Wild Animals A teenage female elephant nursing an injured leg is knocked over by a rambunctious, hormone-laden teenage male. An older female sees this happen, chases the male away, and goes back to the younger female and touches her sore leg with her trunk. Eleven elephants rescue a group of captive antelope in KwaZulu-Natal. The matriarch undoes all of the latches of the gates of the enclosure with her trunk and lets the gate swing open so the antelope can escape. A rat in a cage refuses to push a lever for food when it sees that another rat receives an electric shock as a result. A male Diana monkey, who has learned to insert a token into a slot to obtain food, helps a female who can't get the hang of the trick, inserting the token for her and allowing her to eat the food reward. A female fruit-eating bat helps an unrelated female give birth by showing her how to hang in the proper way. A cat named Libby leads her elderly, deaf and blind dog friend Cashew away from obstacles and to food. In a group of chimpanzees at the Arnhem Zoo in the Netherlands, individuals punish other chimpanzees who are late for dinner because no one eats until everyone's present. A large male dog wants to play with a younger and more submissive male. The big male invites his younger partner to play and restrains himself, biting his younger companion gently and allowing him to bite gently in return. Do these examples show that animals display moral behaviour, that they can be compassionate, empathic, altruistic and fair? Do animals have a kind of moral intelligence? We're in an animal moment. Cornell University historian Dominic Le Capra has claimed that the 21st century will be the century of the animal. Research into animal intelligence and animal emotions has come to occupy the agenda in disciplines ranging from evolutionary biology and cognitive ethology to psychology, anthropology, philosophy, history and religious studies. There is tremendous interest in the emotional and cognitive lives of animals, and there are daily revelations that surprise and even confound some of our assumptions about what animals are like. For example, fish are able to infer their own relative social status by observing dominance interactions among other fish. Fish have also been observed to display unique personalities. We know, too, that birds plan future meals, and that their ability to make and use tools often surpasses that of chimpanzees. Rodents can use a rake-like tool to retrieve food that is out of reach. Dogs classify and categorise photographs the same way humans do. Chimpanzees know what other chimpanzees can see, and show better memory in computer games than do humans. Animals, from magpies to otters to elephants, grieve for their young and mice feel empathy. For anyone who follows scientific literature or popular media on animal behaviour, it's obvious that we're learning a phenomenal amount. New information that's accumulating daily is blasting away perceived boundaries between human and animals and is forcing a revision of outdated and narrow-minded stereotypes about what animals can and cannot think, do and feel. We've been too stingy, too focused on ourselves, but now scientific research is forcing us to broaden our horizons concerning the cognitive and emotional capacities of other animals. One assumption in particular is being challenged by this new research, namely the assumption that humans alone are moral beings. In Wild Justice, we argue that animals have a broad repertoire of moral behaviour and that their lives together are shaped by these behaviour patterns ought and should regarding what's right and what's wrong play an important role in their social interactions, just as they do in ours. Even if you feel somewhat sceptical, we ask that you have an open mind and invite you to view animals differently. Indeed, we hope that even the most sceptical readers will come to change their views about the idea of moral behaviour in animals. The term wild justice is meant as provocative shorthand. Animals not only have a sense of justice, but also a sense of empathy, forgiveness, trust, reciprocity, and much more as well. In this book we present a unified picture of research concerning moral behaviour in animals, 
we show that animals have rich inner worlds. They have a nuanced repertoire of emotions, a high degree of intelligence. They're really smart and adaptable, and demonstrate behavioural flexibility as they negotiate complex and changing social relationships. They're also incredibly adept social actors. They form intricate networks of relationships and live by rules of conduct that maintain social balance, or what we call social homeostasis. We also consider the evolution of moral behaviour. A cover story in Time magazine in December 2007 asked, What makes us moral? and reviewed the current state of research on the evolution of human morality. In this context, the essay gave brief mention to the possibility of moral behaviour in animals. If we think that morality has evolved in humans, we are led willy-nilly to ask about its presence in other animals. For a long while there's been agreement that humans and other animals share common anatomical structures and physiological mechanisms. In particular, humans and other mammals have remarkably similar nervous systems. For readers familiar with evolutionary biology, what we're saying is that arguments for evolutionary continuity, the idea that the differences between species are differences in degree rather than differences in kind, are being supported for a wide variety of cognitive and emotional capacities in diverse species. We believe that there isn't a moral gap between humans and other animals, and that saying things like, the behaviour patterns that wolves or chimpanzees display are merely building blocks for human morality, doesn't really get us anywhere. At some point, differences in degree aren't meaningful differences at all, and each species is capable of the real thing. Good biology leads to this conclusion. Morality is an evolved trait, and they, other animals, have it just like we have it. We also on occasion reference the notion of group selection because our discussion of moral behaviour has implications for ongoing debates about individual versus group selection. As we were completing this book, a number of articles appeared with catchy titles such as Survival of the Nicest and Survival of the Selfless, in which it was argued that individuals might indeed work for the good of the group in which they live. In Wild Justice, along with reviewing new research on animals, we offer some larger challenges to how social animals are understood and studied. We challenge the domination, the hegemony, you might say, of the competition paradigm that has monopolised discussions of the evolution of social behaviour. The predominance of this paradigm in ethology and evolutionary biology is both misleading and wrong, and momentum is building toward a paradigm shift in which nature, red in tooth and claw, sits in balance with wild justice. The innumerable situations in which we see individual animals working together aren't merely veneers of cooperation, fairness and trust, but the real thing. Cooperation, fairness and justice have to be factored into the evolutionary equation in order to understand the evolution of social behaviour in diverse species. To this end, we spend a good deal of time discussing social play behaviour, an activity that has been overlooked by just about all scholars interested in the evolution of morality. Patterns of behaviour observed during play strongly suggest that morality has evolved in animals other than humans. To support our arguments, we consider numerous species in addition to the great apes, especially social carnivores such as wolves. Indeed, even among the great apes there's a good deal of behavioural variation when comparing, for example, chimpanzees and pygmy chimpanzees, bonobos. And this lack of a consistent primate pattern causes trouble for comparative research. We advocate a species-relative view of morality, recognising that norms of behaviour will vary across species. Even within species, there might be variations in how norms of behaviour are understood and expressed. For example, what counts as right in one wolf pack might not be exactly the same as in another wolf pack because of the idiosyncrasies of individual personalities and the social networks that are established among pack members. There isn't one wolf nature, but rather... Wolf natures, just as the renowned biologist Paul Ehrlich argued that there isn't one human nature, but rather human natures. Finally, we argue that the evolution of moral behaviour is tied to the evolution of sociality, and that social complexity will be a distinctive marker for moral complexity. We provide examples of nuanced morality when discussing species in which individuals live either predominantly alone or in long-lasting social groups in which there are enduring bonds.
For example, we'd expect to see more nuanced or fine-tuned morality in packs of gregarious wolves than in less social coyotes and red foxes.